Welcome to video 2. Now that we've covered some basic JavaScript, let's dive into jQuery and write our first jQuery script. In order to do that, I need access to the jQuery library, so I visited jQuery.com. I'm going to click the download section, and you'll note that we have two options here. We have a CDN hosted jQuery and a direct download to jQuery. And in this case, I'm going to be dealing with direct download for the most part. And I'm going to be talking about the CDN hosted version in a couple minutes. Now we have two different versions we can choose from in the direct download. Um, we have the production version, which is 32 KB, and we have the development version, which is 247 KB. And basically the difference here is that the production version has been compressed, which means as many of the tabs and as much as the white space as possible has been stripped out of those files, variable names have been shortened, basically they've done whatever they can do to keep the file size down. So if you go to the development version and click download, you'll notice this is nice and easily readable. Uh, maybe you don't fully understand it, but at least you can go through and have a rough idea of what's going on. If you take a look at the production version, however, this is a lot more complicated. You'll notice there's very little spaces in this file. Um, they've shortened all the variable names down. This is the version of the file that we're going to be using since it's much a smaller file size. But just keep that in mind if you ever want to take a peek into the actual jQuery library, that's where to do it. So I'm going to click the download button there and I'm going to copy this entire file. And I'm going to switch over to my text editor. And what you see here is the template file that we're going to be working with for most of this course. It's a, just a simple HTML and CSS based template. Well, let me take a peek at the HTML. Um, as I said, these files are included with the source file, so you should be able to download those and work directly from them. Um, but this is a basic HTML file, has an HTML5 doc type, and I'm going to be working with HTML5 a little bit, but you don't really have to have a strong understanding of that in order to follow along. In addition to this, there's also a CSS file. That includes all the basic styling that that template needs. So now that we have that jQuery file copied, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call it jQuery.js. And I'm going to paste it in place. There we go. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to open up my test.html and down here within this head section we need to link this file into our HTML. So I'm going to do script src equals I'm going to link in the jQuery, so jQuery.js and then I'm going to close out the script tag. And uh, one minor thing to note, in most cases you usually have a type and usually that would be text CSS or text JavaScript but since I'm dealing with the HTML5 doc type and there's only one type of script now, I can actually remove that and um, it'll be processed and understood correctly. One other thing that I wanted to talk about, let's go back and talk about the CDN version of jQuery. There we go. And CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. Basically what this means is other websites have offered to make this particular file available and it allows you to link to their files rather than having jQuery embedded within your own website. So for example, I can click on the jQuery CDN minified version and I'll take this link and then I would simply paste it into this spot in my file. Um, for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to be working with the actual jQuery file, this jQuery.js but keep that in mind, it's the CDN version might be an option for you. Um, there are a couple of reasons why you might want to use the CDN version. Um, the two things are, this is one less file for your visitors to download from your website, which saves you a little bit on bandwidth. And also, it's possible that whatever user is visiting your site has visited another site that has already downloaded this file. So it's already cached on their computer and it'll be a little bit of a faster experience for them. So keep that in mind. Um, personally, in most of my development work, I tend to use the CDN version. I tend to use the jQuery's version here. So keep that in mind if you want to experiment with this. Um, you're probably not going to notice a huge amount of speed difference between the two, but I tend to like to use the CDN version myself. So back to our text editor here. 
Um, we now have included this jQuery.js file and please note that this file needs to be included in your HTML wherever you use jQuery. Without this library, jQuery code will not work. So make sure you include that. Now that we have a jQuery library in place, let's create a very simple jQuery script. So to do that, I'm going to start with script tags, like so. And in order for this script to run, we need to wait and make sure the entire page has been loaded and is ready for us to use. So to explain that, let me hop over to my preview for a minute. And uh, like I said, this is the template page we're working with. And I'm going to open up the inspector, which is, um, this is something that's actually built into the Safari browser, but most other browsers have it, and I'm going to be talking about that in a future video. Um, however, what I wanted to show you is this DOM tree. Um, the DOM, document object model, is how a browser interprets an HTML web page. Basically, as a page downloads, it gets parsed and sorted into this tree-like structure. So we have the main HTML tag, that's sort of the parent element, and then inside that we have head and body elements, those are children of the HTML, and then within the head we have items like meta, title, and link, and those are all children of the head tag. So we have a structure, basically a tree-like structure, which contains both parents and children of those parents. In order for us to create this jQuery script, let's go back to the HTML file, we need to make sure that the document is ready for us to work with, that everything's been downloaded and then we're ready to go. And to do that, we do something like this. We do dollar sign, and this dollar sign is sort of the shortcut to jQuery. Um, the jQuery library is loaded into this dollar sign automatically by jQuery. And this is what we use to refer to the jQuery object. Then we need a selector, so parentheses, and I'm going to put in document, and then I'm going to put in dot ready, like so. And what this is, is this is a jQuery event. So basically, this is a jQuery object. We're saying to that object, we want to attach an event to the document, the main page, and we want to say, we want waiting for when this document is ready for us to work with. When it's ready for us to work with, then we want to add in some code. And unfortunately, we can't do something like this. So um, for this example, I want to pop up an alert every time the user clicks his mouse on the page. We can't do something like this, alert. Sorry about that. Because what will happen, as you just saw, is that immediately when this page is first loaded, this alert is going to happen. Um, as the page loads into the browser, it's going to be, um, this code is going to run automatically. However, we want to make sure it waits until this document is ready. And to do that, we use an anonymous function. So I want to add function, two parentheses, and an open and closing brackets here. So there we go. So what we're doing is we're waiting for this document to be ready, and then we're calling our alert. And this is an anonymous function because it doesn't have an actual name, so there's no easy way to call it, but it's going to be called automatically when this document is ready for us. Now if we take a look at our preview and we refresh the page, we'll get an alert when the page first loads. So that's working as it should, but I want to modify this so that when the page is actually clicked on, then this alert appears. So we're going to do something a little bit similar. So like this line, we're going to do the dollar sign that refers to the jQuery object. We're going to do our parentheses. We want to select the HTML element on the page. So I'm going to do quotes HTML. And the way jQuery works is sort of like CSS. I'm going to be talking about selectors in a later video. But in this area within the quotes here, that's where we can add um, for example, classes, IDs, we can select things sort of based on standard CSS uh, code. So we're going to select the HTML, then we're going to do dot click. So we're waiting for a click event. And once the click event happens, we want to do an anonymous function. So function 
like so. And then once this anonymous function runs, then we'll call alert like so. Let's take a preview of this. Refresh the page. So anytime I click on this page, it'll pop up a JavaScript alert for us. So this is a pretty simple example, but it explains how jQuery works, sort of the basic syntax. Uh, most of the time you're going to be dealing with a document.ready, so you want to make sure that the document is ready for you before you start issuing jQuery commands. Then often you'll have some sort of event that you want to wait for. So in this case, we're looking for a click event on the main HTML uh, in our page, and at that point we're going to run this code that calls an alert. So hopefully that's enough of a basic introduction. Join me in the next video. I'm going to be talking a little bit about debugging and how we go about selecting elements using jQuery.